up on a little bit of height. If you're firing flat on the floor, that's uh, that's perfectly fine with me, but um, I always find getting up just a little bit helpful. And then lengthen the spine, feel the ears over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips. And drop into your breath, inhaling and exhaling. And as you inhale and exhale here, feel the respiratory diaphragm. So it runs along the uh, edge of the rib cage. Feel that push, pushing down into the belly, massaging the abdominal organs, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, you feel this little pressure in the belly and exhale. And as the respiratory diaphragm drops down, let the belly expand to make room for that. And then go ahead and bring your hands to Anjali Mudra at the heart center. And as you inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. And then exhale back to the heart and go two more times. Inhale and exhale. And one more. And then bring your hands to the belly and lengthen. And these slow, gentle twists to the right, and then back to the center and to the left. So as you're doing this practice, feel yourself, again, massaging into the abdominal organs. as well as noticing the spine itself and that movement. And um, the next time, hopefully, or, or I'll put it this way, if you tend to have sometimes gastric reflux or heartburn, try this. Uh, taking gentle twists and see if it gets things moving and calms the belly down, calms down that gastric fire. And if it doesn't, don't do it. And if it does, you have something that will help with that symptom. Now, the next time you come to the front, lengthen here. Reach with this left arm. Bring your right hand behind your right hip and go ahead and lengthen and then take a slow deep twist to the right, navel, ribs, chest, shoulder, and turn the head and then stay here. So now we're gonna combine both ways of pressuring into the belly. We're gonna breathe deeply and stay in the twist and just imagine yourself massaging the liver, the spleen, the pancreas with the respiratory diaphragm as you inhale. And then come back to the front head, shoulder, arm, chest, and belly. And we're just going to go in and out of that twist two more times. Slow, deep twist to the right as if you're wringing a dish towel. So a little twist and hold and release head, shoulder, chest, and belly. And one more time, that slow, deep twist and hold and releasing back to front head, shoulders, chest, and belly. 
and then float your arms down, lengthen here. As you inhale, lift the arms up, just lift and lengthen, and exhaling back down, go two more times, inhale, and exhale, and once more, inhale, and once more exhale and then bring your right hand to the inside of the right knee left hand by your left hip and inhale lift and lengthen take a slow deep twist to the left navel ribs chest shoulder turning the head we're going to stay here and breathe massaging the abdominal organs with the respiratory diaphragm. And then coming back to the front, head, shoulder, arm, chest, and belly. And we're gonna take that slow, deep twist two more times. So twisting to the left, navel, ribs, chest, shoulder, and head and back to the front head, shoulder, chest, and belly. And once more, this slow, deep twist to the left, turning the head to look towards the left shoulder and coming back to the right, head, shoulder, chest, and belly. And then release the arms down, lengthen the spine, and go ahead and inhale, lifting the arms up and looking up, and exhale. Do that two more times. Inhale up, and exhale down. And once more, inhale. And once more, exhale. And just lengthen the spine, take a few breaths here. And then go ahead and bring the soles of the feet together. So this is called Baddha Konasana, which means bound angle pose. Make sure you're up nice and tall on your sits bones and you want the low back strong and straight and flat. So if you're sitting with a little curve here, if you'll get up on a few more blankets, you'll find you're able to uh, straighten the spine. And let's start with a little holographic action here. So this is the first holographic pose of the day. And uh, what I have learned about studying the fascia is that it is one organ. All the layers and the netting of fascia in the body are connected, just like the skin is connected. But the fascia is interwoven into muscle fibers. It, um, it creates almost a pocket for organs. So the heart, uh, there's a lining around the heart and then a lining around the space around the heart. And the same with the lungs. There's a lining that covers the lungs and then a lining that covers the inside of the rib cage. It's all one connected space. And so when you move the fascia in one place, it will transmit all through the body. And so that's what we're doing here. And there's really, I haven't found any other yoga pose or pranayama practice that gets into the connective tissue in the body quite in this way. Go ahead and sit up nice and tall and lengthen the spine. And then we're just gonna hinge forward with a flat back and then lift our shoulders back up over our hips. And we're gonna keep going like this, hinging forward and lifting up.
and notice where you feel the resistance as we do this. And it will be different for everybody. And it might be different for you on any given day, just depending on what you've been exposed to, what kind of energy, what kind of stress, hinging forward and lifting up. And then the next time you hinge forward, just stay here. So come to a place that's not painful, but you just feel the fascia, the connective tissue lengthening and stretching and breathe into that, inhaling and exhaling. And then go ahead and sit back up. And now when you do your holographic wave, see if you can feel the transmission of that wave into those places that were tight, where the tissue was holding on. And so your wave may be little tiny because we know that we know how water transmits, right? It's in ripply, little wavy ways. And you know that a boat way out far in the lake that, that creates a wake as it motors through that wave, even though it diminishes, it goes on for a long, long time. And that's what the wave in our body is all about. It's about uh, getting those waves to transmit through the fascia. Now, go ahead and come back up to sitting and just bring your right foot out. Your left heel is in the midline of the body. And again, lengthen sitting up nice and tall and bring this left arm up. And we're just going to go up and over here, stretching through the side bodies and exhaling back. So uh, you might just for fun notice where you feel uh, the stretch in your body. Where do you feel it in the connective tissue? And in my body, I feel this interesting connection between the hamstrings back here and the muscles in the side body over here. because they are interwoven, they are interdependent upon each other. So one more time up and over, and then we're just gonna hold for a couple of breaths. So up and over and back. And then the next time you come up and over, stay here and breathe. On your next inhale, lift up, float the arms down, lengthen the spine and another little round of holographic. Be really careful. Make sure you engage the pit of the belly as you wave through here to support the spine. And uh, really engaging the root lock and the pit of the belly as you initiate each holographic wave uh, will give your way more tensegrity. Now, go ahead and sit up nice and tall. And then uh, bend this right leg and switch sides. Again, sitting up nice and tall on those sits bones. The heel is in the midline of the body and the right arm is out and inhaling up and over and exhaling back. Inhaling up and over and exhale back. So just flowing, noticing where is the connection in my body. And that will change and move, by the way, as you, um, as you progress in your yoga practice.
So one more time over and back. And then the next time you come up and over, we're just going to stay here. Inhale as you lift up, lengthen the spine, and moving in holographic, compressing and releasing. And then go ahead and bring that to a close. Sit up nice and tall and uh, make your way onto your hands and knees on your mat. So, uh, so when you're on your hands and knees, a great trick is to take your blanket or your towel and place it on your mat like this so you have a, a little extra padding. Uh, um, I've been doing yoga for so long, I don't like the blanket under my knees. It, it, it bothers me. I feel like it creates um, uh, a distance between the earth and my knees. But if you need it, if you like it, if it feels good, then you should, you should use it so that you're not distracted by uh, unnecessary pain as you're practicing. So go ahead and inhale, draw the navel towards the spine, rounding into a cat stretch. So your chin comes onto your chest and then lift the tailbone, sink the belly, open the heart center. The shoulders come down and back as the heart center opens. And keep going like this, inhaling, engaging the bondus, rounding one vertebra at a time, bringing your chin to chest, and lift the tailbone, sink the belly, open the heart center. So notice the stretching and pulling and compression along the front body as you're moving in and out of this cat cow. Because um, like I said, before we started class, I was talking about Marna points in Ayurveda, and they run all up and down on the front of the body. And it said that the Marna points are, um, are the surfacing places where the nadis or the pranic channels um, come out to the skin. And that by activating them, uh, you can stimulate the body's own self-healing capacity. And I don't know if I really literally believe that's true or not, but it creates an interesting theoretical framework. It creates a way to think about your body uh, that takes the medical model out of it because the medical model is always looking for what's wrong. What's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. So the next time you come to the cat stretch, stay here. And again, move in that holographic way. Now, if your wrists are starting to hurt, make sure you're pressing into that first knuckle to take some of the stress of your weight out of the hands. And then bring this to a close and walk your hands forward. And then just sit back into child's pose and you want to feel the stretch in the upper back. Reach your hands as far forward as you can and you want the elbows to be straight. And then hinge forward, bring your shoulders over the wrist in this modified plank, hinge back, bend the elbows, come to this puppy pose first. Get this down dog tilt to the pelvis, and then sit back, bringing your sits bones onto the heels, lengthening to the spine. Take a few breaths here. And inhale. 
as you hinge forward, bringing the shoulders over the wrists, bending the elbows, hinging back into child's. Coming forward to modify plank. Puppy pose, child's pose. And one more time, all the way around like this. Plank, puppy, child. And when you come to child's here, stay here. And draw your hands back so that now you're uh, now you're able to maybe get your sit bones a little bit closer to your heels, and just shift your weight from left to right. And as you're doing this, if you can get your forehead on the mat, roll the forehead back and forth a little bit as you shift your weight from shin to shin, so that you massage the up. Uh, the upper forehead right up here into the mat. And then bring this rocking to a close and draw your hands under your shoulders. And as you exhale, press up. Take a deep breath. Go ahead and bring your right foot forward. If you have yoga blocks, um, it would it would be a good idea to get the blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, it's okay. You can do this with your hands on the floor. I'm going to show you both ways. So bringing your right leg back. And what we're after, especially today, is a stretch on this left hip flexor. We want to stretch out the front of the left thigh. And you want to walk this right foot forward. So see, my foot is in front of my knee. My knee is here. So you can bring your hands onto the floor here. It's fine. Um, the only reason I like the blocks is because this makes this part of the back round forward a little bit. Uh, whereas if you have blocks, you can lengthen and see how nice and flat that is as opposed to uh, coming forward. But it really, it's okay to do it like this. Now go ahead and hinge forward, bringing that right knee over the ankle, and then flex the right foot and hinge back. So keep going like this, hinging forward and hinging back. And it doesn't matter how far back you come. And it doesn't even matter if this uh, right leg is uh, doesn't straighten all the way, because mine wasn't straightened this morning. Uh, but what matters is that you um, is that you stretch into these muscles on the back of the leg, and then when you come forward, you stretch into the hip flexors on the front of the leg. And uh, really, this is about the only thing we do consistently uh, to stretch the hip flexor. So if you have a home practice, I highly recommend that you do this a couple times, a couple, three times a week. Okay, so the next time you come forward, stay here, lengthen the spine, and even if your hands are down here, engage the belly and lift up into this long lunge, and then float the arms down and hinge back, and hinge forward. Press into the four corners of the right foot, engage the bottoms and lift, and then hinge forward, come back, and forward and one more time this little balance and release bring the hips back bring the right leg back and then switch up side so bringing your left foot forward with or without blocks it's up to you make sure the left ankle is in front of the knee it's in front of the knee so if you're way back here when you come forward the knee is going to come too far in front of the um, in front of that left ankle so go ahead and hinge forward and hinge back. So I find if I tuck my toes under with this right foot in the back that it, um, it's less 
painful on my knee. And I like the stretch into the toes with that. But if this is better for you, it's okay to have that foot flat on the mat. It's your preference. And if you're not sure, try it both ways a few times. So the next time you come forward and back, well, you come forward, stay here, engage the bottoms and lift up. And then bring the arms down, hinging back, hinging forward, inhale up. Exhale down, hinge back, hinge forward, and one more time, inhale, and exhale, and then hinge back, and bring that left leg back, and, um, and then just do a little holographic right here, very gently, very easy, holographic. And then bring that to a close and find your yoga blanket or your beach towel or whatever you're using as your yoga prop. And so if you have a blanket like this, I like to fold it uh, so it's folded like this and then just bring that in too so it's folded like this. Uh, and if you have it, so it's, it's this thick, it's pretty thick probably a couple of inches. Uh, and then this edge of it goes towards the top of your mat like this. And you're gonna lay down over this yoga prop and you want this rolled edge to be at the bottom of your bra line. Uh, and, and the bottom edge really doesn't really matter so much where it is. But you just want to come down like this. So I shouldn't have worn such a baggy shirt. I'll tuck it in there. So you can see, uh, and it's a good idea to try to get the tops of your feet on the mat, just because the floor can be uh, can hurt <laughs> very hard. Uh, okay, so then bring your arms out in front of you. Your elbows are under your shoulders. So this is called a sphinx pose. And I'm not really in the pose yet because I'm just hanging out and I want to activate my muscles uh, to be really active in the pose. So press the forearms into the mat, uh, draw the navel towards the spine, press your pelvis gently into the floor, and then draw your elbows energetically towards your hip points. See if you can feel those shoulders dropping forward and back, and then lengthen the back of the neck so you don't want to do this and crimp the back of the neck. Let the neck follow the line of the spine. And just take a few breaths here. And again, uh, you will probably feel some stretching and some tension on the entire front body. And just breathe here. Just breathe, belly breathe into that yoga prop that you have under the belly. Feel the pressure and the release. And even on the release, there's a little pressure because of that blanket that you have under there. Now, go ahead and, um, and just bring your hands out, arms out to the side and bring the head down to the mat, the forehead down to the mat. And draw your hands uh, under your shoulders. And we're going to come in and out of cobra pose. So. Uh, stretch the feet and press the tops of the feet into the mat and press the pelvis into the mat and then lift your head and lengthen and get your shoulders down and back and this is how your shoulders are going to stay and your elbows are going to stay tucked in towards the side of the body and you just press up lifting the heart center and release back down lengthen as you release forward Inhale, engage the belly, press the feet and the pelvis, and lift. 
and exhale and release. Two more times like that. Inhale and lift. Make sure the shoulders are down and back. The heart center is open. And one more time, lift. And one more time, release. Now, just stretch your arms out, stretch your feet out, and imagine you're superwoman flying over New York City. So stretch, 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 long stretch, stretching uh, both arms and legs. And then release. And let's do those three cobras one more time. Hands under the shoulders, arms tucked in. Press the top of the feet, press the pelvis, engage the belly. Lift your, only your head, bring the head over the shoulders, and then get the shoulders down and back the heart open and press up. And back down. And press up. And back down. It doesn't matter how high you come. A little cobra like this, press up is just fine. And press back down. And this time, bring your forearms to the top of the mat uh, and bring one, one forearm on top of the other. So they're stacked like this. Maybe I should turn my mat for just a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so your hands are stacked like this. And just rest your head down on those forearms and just take a few breaths. And, um, just like when we're on our back and I say, feel the support of the earth under your spine, we'll feel the support of the earth underneath the belly. And as you inhale and exhale into the yoga prop that you have, the blanket under your belly, just feel that gentle pressure, like a gentle hug and release. And a gentle hug and release. See if you can get the breath to be fluid and smooth. And then um, you might have to lift your head and turn it to see me, but lift your feet up off the mat and we're gonna make circles with our heels. So uh, both heels go to the right, they come down towards the floor, they go to the left and up towards the sits bones. And uh, the, the pelvis can kind of rock and roll a little bit over that blanket here. Make sure you're moving slowly and smoothly. And this part where the heels are, are back towards your sits bones is really important. And, and um, you don't want to force it to where it's causing the back to arch, the low back to arch. You don't want to compress the low back. But notice the stretch on the fronts of the thighs. And the next time your heels are towards your sit bones, we're going to reverse. So now both heels are going over to the left, down towards the mat, over to the right, and towards the sit bones. To the left, to the floor, to the right, sit bones. And making those circles this way. And um, don't bring your legs so far over that it's whipping the back too. You want to have that sense of control um, that the muscles are, are have enough time to activate and control the motion of the legs. Okay, now bring that to a close. And uh, just lower your feet, put, put your hands back on your forearms and just take a few breaths. Enjoy the support of the earth under the spine. Notice you may be able to hear your breath. I breathe in, I breathe out. And then go ahead and bring your forearms back down on the mat. So back into that sphinx posture. The elbows are right under the shoulders and the forearms are parallel on the mat. 
and lengthen. And just take a few breaths here. Now, bend the right knee and bring your left arm parallel, your left forearm parallel to the short end of the mat and bend this right knee and reach back and just see if you can wrap your hand around that foot and push the foot into the hand. And if you want to lift that knee a little bit, you can. Make sure the knee is in line with the sits bone and then release the leg, release the foot and move right to the other side. So now your right arm is, is uh, parallel to the short end of the mat here, bend the left knee. And if you'll reach out and reach around lengthening, uh, it will be easier to take hold of that left foot, press the foot into the hand, draw the knee back, breathe in here. And if this is not available to you, you can stay in Cobra. You can lift that left knee off the mat if you want, and then release it back. Release the leg. And then you're just gonna uh, roll over and take this blanket out, and then come all the way onto your back. And bring the knees into the chest and flex the foot and press them up to the ceiling and engage the belly, pressing the low back into the mat. And we're doing this to counterpose those back bends that we did. So anytime you do a back bend, you want to counterpose uh, with some sort of forward fold. Sometimes we'll do downward dog. Uh, but this is actually a forward fold. It's just flipped on your back. Now bend the knees into the chest, bring the palms of the hands on top of the kneecaps. And as you exhale, hug the knees into the chest, draw the navel towards the spine. And as you inhale, the knees come forward. Go ahead and do that a few more times. Exhale and inhale and exhale. And then when you're ready, go ahead and make your way into Shavasana. Now, because we did a lot of back bends, I really highly suggest you just take this little blanket and place it under the thighs as you come into Shavasana. Just this little bit can really ease any, any um, you know, because we've kind of riled up the low back. We want it to relax and calm back down. If it still hurts like this, if you'll draw the navel towards the spine, engaging the bondas and release a few times, uh, that can get the low back to release if it's gripping. Otherwise, drop into Shavasana. <laughs> 